This is the fourth video in a series covering x86 buffer overflows, how they work, and how they can be exploited. Last time we looked at fuzzing to confirm that the target is vulnerable and to help us reliably crash a program. In this video, we'll cover methods to determine the specific payload required to overflow the buffer and to overwrite the return address, allowing us to control the value that gets written to the EIP and therefore control the flow of execution. Recapping quickly, from the previous video we determined that we need a payload of trun, space, full stop, and roughly 2100 A's to overflow the buffer and overwrite the return address. Referencing the stack frame structure, we have the parameters, return address, stored EBP, and when a variable is declared, a buffer space is allocated on top of the stack. When we're sending our payload, this is filling up the allocated buffer for the variable before overflowing into the stored EBP and overwriting the return address. These are then written to the EBP and EIP, and as we know, the EIP points in next instruction to be executed, and so it'd be really useful if we can reliably control this. We need to determine the offset between the variable that we're writing to and the return address, which will tell us how large our buffer needs to be. One method that we can use here is using a cyclical pattern within our payload. We can then load up a target application in the debugger, send our payload, and see what is written to the EIP. A common method that's used to generate this payload is breaking it down into three character sets. We've got uppercase letters, lowercase letters, and numbers. So we'll repeat these three characters iterating the number until the number reaches nine. Once it reaches nine, it's reset to zero, and the lowercase letter is then iterated up to B. The number then repeats before the lowercase letter then goes up to C. This repeats until the lowercase letters reach Z, then iterates back over to A, which moves the uppercase A to uppercase B. So this process repeats giving us a maximum string length of 20,280 characters, where each four character string is unique. Why is this important? When this is sent to our payload, the hex representation for these characters will be written to memory in the target. And assuming all the other buffer overflow conditions are met, the return address will be overwritten with some of our payload. By each four characters being unique within the string, that means that the value that is written to the EIP can be easily matched to a position within the payload, therefore telling us the offset between the variable that we're writing to and the return address, which gives us the information that we need to be able to control the EIP. Whilst it would be fairly straightforward to generate the string ourselves, there's a pair of tools that are part of the Metasploit framework that will help us here. Pattern create to generate the pattern, and pattern offset to match a hex pattern to the generated string and identify its position or offset. Let's create a pattern of 2100 bytes, as we know that's roughly what's required to overwrite the EIP. We'll run msf pattern create, specifying 2100 as the length to create the pattern. We can see it's created us a pattern from AA0 to CR9. Now we just need to send that to our target. Let's use a Python script for that. We can adapt this script for the remaining videos. You'll notice that a few things here are the same as the fuzzing script, so let's work our way through. We're importing socket to support the network connection and sys for our exit. We define the host and port of the target. And here we build our payload by specifying the prefix of trun, space, full stop, and then our pattern that we created a moment ago. Next, we enter the try statement, and this is just to give us a basic error thrown if there were issues. Within the try statement, we define the network socket that we're using with AF INET specifying IPv4 address family and SockStream identifying that it's a TCP connection. We'll specify a timeout so that our script will throw an error if there's problems connecting or sending the payload. And then we connect to the target and receive the welcome banner. We print a message to confirm that the payload is being sent and then send our generated payload consisting of the prefix and the pattern. And at the bottom is our basic catch for our try statement just to exit the script. Great, that should be good to go. Let's get form server loaded up in immunity. And click run or F9 to resume. We can then run our new Python script. Great, Vuln server has crashed. We can see our payload here in the stack. And we've hit an access violation when executing 396F4338, which is the address in the EIP. So what's happened here? Well, if we convert the hex of 396F4338 to ASCII, we get 9 lowercase o uppercase c 8, 
We then need to remember that x86 uses little ng in ordering, so we can reverse this to get a string of 8, capital C, lowercase o, 9, meaning that this is the unique four characters in the pattern that we sent that have overwritten the EIP. Using MSF pattern offset, we can specify the length of the pattern that we sent, along with the hex representation of the string as it appears in the EIP. That gives us an offset of 2006, which means there were 2006 bytes after the end of our tron space full stop prefix and the start of our return address in the stack frame. Awesome, let's just validate that quickly. Very similar Python script this time. All that we've changed is the payload here. Instead of sending that pattern, sending something slightly different. We're defining the value we want to overwrite the return address and therefore EIP with, and we'll just use a placeholder of BBBB for now. We'll then define our offset of 2006 bytes, which we've just discovered, and we'll build a payload of our prefix, then by repeating the character A 2006 times, and finally appending the return address of Bs. We expect the A's to fill up the allocated buffer space with 41s, and the B's to overwrite the return address and EIP with 42s. Let's bring up our Windows machine and restart Immunity by pressing Ctrl F2, and then run by pressing F9. We can then run our new script. Awesome, that's crashed the application and overwritten the EIP with 42 42 42 42, which is hex for BB BB. Perfect, we can overwrite the EIP with arbitrary values now. The next step in developing our buffer overflow exploit. In this video, we've used a cyclical pattern to determine the return address offset, allowing us to control the EIP on the target application. In the next video, we'll look at how we can check how much space we have available to us outside of the current overflow. Thanks for watching.